Hey, so welcome to another S2000 video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install basically new brakes onto the cars. As you can see, I have some uh, track day spec pads from PowerStop, and I have new front rotors and slightly used rear rotors. Um, I got all these things from a friend of mine uh, here locally in Calgary. Um, the car kind of just needs an overhaul uh, on the brakes, so looking forward to putting these on. Um, these track day spec pads, from the reading and the research that I've done online, um, they seem to be relatively all right for light track days. Um, me kind of getting relatively new into the whole track driving, uh, last year I did my first two events ever. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how these compare with the stock uh, pads and rotors. I actually didn't really find a whole lot of issues in terms of braking, probably mainly because I'm a fairly new driver and I'm not actually braking hard enough. So um, it'll be interesting to see how much of a difference these make compared to the stock ones and if I'll actually get a feel for them. But regardless, uh, the car does need a brake overhaul. Um, so I'm gonna be doing this. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and jack up the car. I'm gonna be doing all uh, front and rear pads and rotors, so I'm just gonna be raising the entire car up and putting it on jack stands, so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna show you on the passenger side of the car right now. It's gonna be the same steps as the driver's side. Um, we're starting on the front here. So the first thing that I kind of like to do, this isn't necessarily the proper order, but since I'm doing pads and rotors, I like to start on, as you can see, they're missing from the actual car right now. But this bolt, or this screw, sorry, there's two of them. Kind of, there's one on either side of the rotor. Um, this bottom one here came out just fine. I used an impact driver, got that out, didn't strip, no problem. Not the case with the top. Um, so, the alternative that you can do uh, basically is to drill the screw out. It's a little bit annoying, but if you get yourself a high speed drill bit, um, I just got this screw extractor set and it came with a high speed drill bit. Um, the screw extractors are actually more meant for if the top of the screw breaks off. So you basically drill a hole within the screw to use that to pull it out. In this case, it's stripped out, so I just use the, the drill bit to basically drill this bolt out just the top portion before it hits the threads. So as you can see, the top portion is gone. So the next thing that we're gonna do is actually remove the brake caliper portion. So the actual caliper body, where the pistons are, that's held on by two 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, they're a little bit difficult to see, but they're just on the back side of where these uh, sliders are. So get a 12 millimeter wrench or a socket behind there, remove that, and we'll get to the next step. So with those removed, you can slide the caliper body off the pads. And what we wanna do is we wanna hang it somewhere so it doesn't get in the way. Um, I'm just gonna just put it onto the control arm, the upper control arm right now. Um, but what you can do is actually use a bungee cord or something like that to support this. So I'm just going to place it temporarily back on here, grab my bungee and put it up. So there's a hole actually just within the body of the caliper itself. So that's a good place to kind of snake your bungee cord through. Make sure that the bungee cord is decently tight so it doesn't hang freely. Just like that, staying in place. So we can get to removing the pads. So um, if you look here, the pads are actually just clipped on either side. All you have to do is basically wiggle them out of there. So that's the outer part. As you can see, I actually had a decent life left on them, but these are just stock replacement pads, so on the track they weren't really the greatest thing. Um, and same thing on the other side, 
just loosen that guy out. An uh, easy way to tell which one's the inside and the outside is that the inside one has this little tab here. Um, so that's how you can know where which side it's coming from. Now the next thing that we're going to do is pull this uh, caliper bracket off. It's attached to the hub via two 17 millimeter bolts on the back side. Um, it's a little bit tight to see, but I'm going to try to shut the camera and just see if I can give you guys an angle. So attempting to show the angle was a big fail. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the bracket and kind of show you where the bolts are in relation to that bracket. So basically, when the caliper bracket is in there, see these two screw holes? That's where the 17 millimeter bolts go. So that's, that'll give you some reference. So now, with that out of the way, um, we can actually get to taking the the, the rotor off. So the rotor I found, sometimes it'll be on there pretty good. So you just want to take a hammer, give it a few taps around the, the front side of the rotor, and then give a good couple of nice whacks from the back side where the caliper is. You don't have the brake shield in the way there, so we'll get to doing that now. So now with the rotor off, it's a good idea to just make sure that your um, mating surface is relatively free of any contaminants or anything like that. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is go and prep the new rotors. Here's our new rotor. Um, from the factory, new rotors, they come with a kind of like an oil film on the outside just to protect it from rusting. So what you want to do, so you're going to take some brake cleaner and give it a nice spray down and wipe that surface off. Uh, basically any surface that the brake is gonna be basically in contact with. So any of this outer rotor ring, we're gonna wipe that off because that's where our pads are gonna be interacting and you don't want oil and stuff to mix within your brand new pads. So we'll give this a good spray down. What I like to do is basically spray the back side of the rotor first, wipe that off, clean it, and then I'll put it on the car and I'll spray the front side of the rotor while it's on the car. So we'll just get started. Next, liberal spray. We'll just make sure that we're wiping off any oil or anything like that. So what I like to do is give it a nice wipe, come back, do another pass. So we're pretty happy with the rotors themselves being pretty clean. this guy secure so it doesn't move around. Okay, and like I mentioned before, now we'll go ahead and wipe down this side of the rotor. Okay, so to basically put everything back on, it's just the reverse. We're gonna start by first uh, putting on the caliper bracket onto the car. So like I mentioned, it's the two 17 millimeter bolts that we're gonna be putting on from the back side of the car. With those snug up, we can uh, put on our new pads. Sorry, but before we move on to the new pads, um, there's actually these little clips that hold the brake pads in. Um, our new brake pads come with new ones, so we'll actually just take these old guys off. It's a simple removal and install. I believe the top and bottom are exactly the same, so we just 
just leave it. Put one side in, like so. You don't, there's a little tap on the sides, so you basically just push down on either side and the tab will come up. And just like that. Make sure it's fully seated onto the actual bracket itself. Looks like we're good to go. So now we can take our new tab, I mean, sorry, not our new tab, but our new pads. Like I mentioned, the one with the tab, um, that'll go onto the inside. And what I like to do is just put a little brake lubricant on the edges where it slides into the actual clips. So we'll just put a little dab on the front side here. Then another dab on the other side. Then we'll slide this guy in. So, just like so. Um, hopefully this front side will be a lot easier to see. But we're just gonna do the same thing on the outer brake pad. Just a little dab of grease. I don't know if this is necessary, but it's just something I like to do. Just make sure it's lined up properly. There. Put the bottom there. Slide this guy in. Just like so. So snap in place. And another place I like to put some lubricant on is just on the outside of the pad. Um, I find this kind of just reduces any noise potentially. So I just like to put a little bit on my finger. Give the outside of the pad a little bit of a massage with some lubricant. And we'll do the same on the other side. Sorry, this next portion might be a little bit tough to see, but I have this is a pad spreading tool. Um, so what we're gonna do is take one of our old pads, put it on the inside of the caliper. So the caliper right now, uh, the piston is slightly out because obviously our old pads were slightly worn. So what we're gonna do is put a pad right up against the, the caliper piston itself. We're gonna put this guy onto the inside here. So this metal plate is gonna go in between the actual caliper itself. We're gonna thread this portion until it hits with, well, not it hits, until it meets with the old pad. And we're gonna keep on twisting until basically that piston bottoms up. So because we have brand new pads going in, um, this is gonna be able to basically go over the new pads. If we didn't do this, it probably wouldn't go on. So uh, this tool is really cheap. It's like, I think $9 um, at a local parts store. So we're just gonna thread this in until we can't go any further and just bottomed out. So I'm gonna back this off, make sure that the piston is actually flush with the caliper itself. So we'll take our old pad off. And looking, yeah, it's pretty flush. So now we can get to reinstalling the caliper onto the bracket. So again, with the brake caliper, we're just gonna remove the bungee that it's held on by. Fish this guy out. Kind of shoved it really well into here. So we're gonna thread this guy out. So with that out of the way, you can get to actually mounting it on. Um, one thing I like to do is just start at the top. So we'll just take one of our 12 millimeter bolts and kind of, well, not drop the bolt, but thread it in. As mentioned before, the brake line's kind of in the way. So be aware of that, but we're just gonna lightly get that started. So once that's on there, then we can slide the actual caliper itself, like so, onto the actual pads, and then we can line it up with the bottom, and we'll throw on our bottom caliper bolt as well. So make sure we just line those up and get to there. Another thing that I will mention is that there's uh, the sliders on the brake calipers. It's a good idea to grease those, um, especially if the pads haven't 
or your brakes haven't been done in a very long time. I believe these brakes were actually done not too long ago. Um, so they actually feel relatively smooth. So I'm gonna skip this step. Hopefully it won't bite me in the butt later, but um, that is another thing just to keep in mind that it's a good idea to do in case you wanna go for a full, basically overhaul. Now what we're gonna do is just tighten these guys snugly down and then we can basically get to torquing all the bolts that we put on. Now for torque specs, um, obviously you don't have to do this at the very end, but that's kind of just the order that I've taken. Um, our top, sorry, our caliper bolts that attach our caliper onto the bracket, those are gonna be 24 foot pounds. So let's get a torque wrench on here. 24. 24 is actually not a lot, so um, you don't have to do these super tight. So that's 24 foot pounds. And now we haven't torqued up our caliper bracket bolts yet. Those are, again, the 17 millimeters, and those are actually to 79.6 foot pounds or 80 foot pounds. You can actually do these with the caliper installed, so don't worry about that, but you can just torque them down right after you install the caliper brackets as well too. So just like that, now we have the front uh, rotors and pads replaced and we went ahead, removed the guide pins, cleaned those and lubricated those. So now we can move on to the back of the vehicle. Okay, so now we're at the back of the car. Um, so what you wanna do first is just like the fronts, I like to deal with the set screws on the rotors themselves. In this example, they go here and here. Luckily in this corner, both the screws actually came out with no issues the other side that was a different story I had to drill those out but so since we have those removed we can get ahead to actually removing the brake caliper itself so just like the front they're held on by two 12 millimeter uh, bolts that go into the guide pins so one right here then one at the bottom there so we're just going to take those off right now and actually uh, just to note i did see a couple of things basically mentioning that um, you want to hold the guide pin in place while you're loosening those. So the guide pin in the back is actually a 17 millimeter, unlike the front, which is a 19 millimeter. So put a wrench on that and we'll loosen off the back side. Okay, so now with those bolts removed, we can go ahead and take the rear caliper off. Um, there is actually a groove on the caliper itself, the piston. So what you want to do is just pull directly straight back and it should come off. There we go, just like that. We move it out of the way. Um, you can kind of conveniently rest it on the lower control arm, actually. And then we can get ahead to removing our brake pads, which just slide straight up. And we'll remove the actual um, caliper bracket itself. So unlike the front, which was a 17 millimeter, these are held on by two 14 millimeters. Um, and just like the front, it's gonna be kind of hard to show you guys, so I'm just gonna take the bracket off and show you where the bolts go. So again, just like the front, here's a caliper bracket that I just pulled off. Um, it goes on where basically you have the slides facing towards the inside of the car, and these are the 14 millimeter bolts that just hold it to the knuckle itself. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, I didn't show this in the front, uh, kind of, I did it while the the caliper bracket was on the car, but I'm gonna do this off the car now. So I'm gonna be removing these uh, slide pins and showing you how to clean them and degrease them and regrease them. So here we have the caliper bracket. Um, like I mentioned, we have these pins here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna work on them one at a time. Basically, I like to just grab the boot and pull on the pin itself. So to make sure that the boot comes off and just the pin comes out. And there we go. So just like that, here's our pin, sliding pin. So it's a little dirty. So what I'm just gonna do is hit it with some brake cleaner. Okay, 
give that a nice wipe down, make sure it's relatively clean. And then what I'm going to do now is remove the boot off as well too. So we're going to grease up our pin here, just with some brake lubricant. Just run that across, all over, make sure every surface is coated. And then we're just going to take it, go into our, our slider, back and forth, make sure that's well lubricated. And before we actually button everything up, we're going to put the boot back on. So the boot has one smaller end that goes into the actual caliper bracket itself. You just kind of square that up and you push down, make sure it's fully seated, looks like we're good. And now we can reinstall our slider. So just like so, push down until it mates with the actual boot itself, then we can move on to the other side. And just like that, our slides are now uh, cleaned and re-lubricated so we can put this back onto the car. But the first thing that we're going to do is knock off our old rotor. So very similar to the front of the car, what we want to do um, is just give a few taps just on the face of the, the rotor. Um, these rotors I'm throwing away so I'm not too concerned. So we're just going to so as you can see, it actually loosens up quite a lot easier than uh, the front rotors, but it still gets a little bit stuck on the hub. So what we're gonna do is hit it from the backside a couple times, just where the caliper goes. We'll turn it until it's free. And once it's loose, you can just pull it off. So although my old rotors, they appear to be fine, uh, the main reason why I'm replacing them is actually the last track day that I had, I had completely burned through my inner set of pads and the metal backing plate was basically riding against the disc. So instead of having to get those refinished, um, I luckily had a friend, same friend that I bought the pads and front rotors off of, get a pair of gently used rear pads. So I'm just gonna clean these up and put them on the car. And just like the front, I like to just hit these with some uh, brake cleaner um, on the back side, just to make sure that's clean. So we'll go ahead, get that a nice spray down. Wipe it across. I like to do a couple passes, just to make sure that we have all the oils and stuff off. So once we're satisfied with that, we'll go ahead and mount it on the car, and then we can clean the front side. One thing I will know before we put the new rotor back on, um, is if you had to drill out your old rotor screws, that would go where these two holes are, um, you want to just make sure you pull those uh, remnants off of the bolts in case you had to just drill out the head. So I'm going to go ahead put our old, new old rotor on. And just like all the other corners, we're just going to hold it down with a single lug nut. Then we'll go ahead, hit the front side, brake cleaner, give that a good wipe down. As you can see, the piston on the rear rotor actually has a cross mark on it. Um, so unlike the fronts where we can use a caliper spreader uh, tool, we can't actually push this piston back. So what we have to do is use a 3 8 ratchet, put it into this cross section, and turn it clockwise. Doing that, it's going to actually sink the piston back into place so we have enough room to uh, put this on with new pads. Sometimes it takes a long time, so I'm just going to kind of skip forward to the next step. The piston is actually fully retracted now. Um, a key tip that I'll give you is that when you retract this, at first it's going to be really tough, so that's normal, or at least it's normal for this car, and then it gets a lot easier. But when you get it relatively flush, uh, you want this in kind of a cross pattern where there's a hole 
um, at the top of the caliper. You just want to line that up because on one of the pads, the inner pad, it has a almost like a, a dot where it lines into that groove. So you just want to make sure that that's ready to go. Also, there's a clip in here that I just swapped out to a new one. I don't know how important that is, but what we're going to do now is get the actual um, caliper bracket on itself and then we can go ahead and put in our new pads and throw the caliper back on. Because the parking brake um, assembly is on the rear caliper as well too, it's a little bit tight if we try to torque the caliper's uh, bracket things down um, with that in place. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and torque those down. I believe the torque spec is about 41 or 42 foot pounds. Now with that torque down, we can go ahead and install our new brake pads. Um, like I mentioned, basically, so as you can see on this brake pad, there's a, there's a dot right on the middle of the top. So that's going to go on our inside because that's going to line up with where our cross in the piston goes. So but before we put those on, I'm just going to put on some new clips just onto the caliper bracket itself to hold these guys in. So these are a relatively loose fit. But once the, the, the pads go in, they'll stay in place. So dotted in, goes inside first, just like that. And the outside one, just like that. So with those in place, now we can go ahead and reinstall our caliper. Before I do this, I want to just go ahead and grease the, uh, the actual backing plates of the pads. Just give that a quick light coat. And this is just to prevent from any unwanted noise. Okay, so now with that done, should be able to get this caliper back on. There we go. And then kind of similarly, our sliders, they might be fully stuck out. So we'll just uh, move those in accordingly. Make sure we have a nice good weight. So once those are lined up, we'll just go ahead and throw our uh, bolts on for the actual caliper. Okay, so those are now started. So we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these guys up. Uh, these bolts, I believe it's like a 12 or 17 foot pound torque spec. It's pretty low. So what I'm just gonna do is kinda do them up by hand and call it a day. Now I have the rears all buttoned up. Um, we just went ahead and tightened everything down so everything looks good. Now, basically, uh, one, also, sorry, one tip that I wanted to give you, I'm gonna run over to the engine bay right now. Um, is as you're retracting the pistons, your brake fluid may rise. Um, so what I like to do is just, I'll just uncap that so it's kind of an open system. So in case it does need to force fluid back into the reservoir, um, it's not pushing up against closed pressure. So it's a little bit easier. Um, if there is any excess, um, like in my case, it is gone up decently high, um, but I'm gonna be doing a brake fluid flush as well too. So I'm gonna be removing a bit of uh, fluid here and then you can basically call this a day. So what we're gonna do now is just go ahead, throw our wheels and tires on and put the car back on the ground. But before we go ahead and kind of uh, button everything up and lower the car back down onto the ground, what I'm gonna do is just put the parking brake on, pump the brakes a couple times just to make sure that everything is seated. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the car back down on the ground.